Hi there! Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. This video is part of the series of videos I'm posting to try to help people out when it comes to attitude tests like the civil service exam. This video in particular is part of my series on language. Today we're going to talk about vocabulary building, idiomacy. Now, idiomacy is a series of videos I made to try to help you guys out when it comes to idiomatic expressions because you always have to go out in examinations. Not only for the entrance exam or sa civil service, but also for the entrance exam or mga application exams if you want to work somewhere. So today you're going to talk about another set. There are a lot of other videos I already posted. If you want to watch the last idiomacy series regarding numbers and number idioms, you can click right here to catch up. And today I'm going to switch over to my PC para mapakita ko sa inyo yung mga pag-aaralan natin. Okay? So see you in a bit. Money idiom. So ito yung mga idiomatic expressions na involving money or coins or an amount of money. And the uh, key here is just um, realizing yung value ng pera and also being familiar with them. Kasi ang usually, ang problema sa money idioms is that they deal with a currency na hindi natin ginagamit, which is dollars. So when you talk about dollars, pennies, dimes, parang uh, lost in translation yung value na yun sa atin. Kasi nga, Pilipino tayo, we don't have that same currency. So the key here is familiarity. Try to incorporate this sa inyong day-to-day -day lives. Maybe use them in a sentence. That way, mas madali niyo ma-recall when it comes to the actual exam. Okay? So we have uh, coining money, marry money, for my money, have money to burn, money for jam, my two cents, a penny for your thoughts, a dime's worth, dime a dozen, drop a dime, dollars to donuts. We're going to cover all of these. Iisa-isahin lang natin sila. So don't try to, ano yun, bilisan lahat. Uh, when it comes to this. If it takes you a few times to watch it again and again to be really solid dun sa kung ano ibig sabihin, do that. You can hit pause sa bawat uh, introduction ng bagong idiom to see if nakukuha nyo ng tama yung meaning. Okay? Yun yung pinaka-key doon. So, coining money. When you talk about coining money, it means earning money quickly and easily. It's something that you can actually guess. Because when you're coining money, it means you're earning money. And if you're a Filipino, you probably heard your mom or your tita say or someone say na ano hindi ako gumagawa ng pera. Parang money doesn't grow on trees. Uh, hindi ako hindi ko kaya uh, pumulot ng pera or anything like that. So yun yung pinaka concept. It's the same. Coining money is uh, earning money quickly and easily. Parang nagpiprint ka ng sarili mong pera. So examples, if we are going to use that in a sentence, this would be a good one. Sabi, his business was an overnight success. Now he's just coining money. Ibig sabihin, yung business niya daw, biglang uh, lumaki, biglang naging successful. Kaya ngayon, parang nag-print na na siya ng sarili niyang pera. Okay? Pwede yung coining money. Sometimes people also use printing money. Okay? Ito, medyo mas obvious na onti yung ibig sabihin. Kaya, coining, printing, it's the same. It's basically earning money ng madali. Okay? Parang nakaupo ka lang, tapos dumarating yung pera sa'yo. Marry money. When you marry money, okay, marry, ito yung pinaka-key natin dyan. When you marry money, it gives you the connotation na nagpakasal ka sa pera, but not just pera, okay? Marry, it's marrying into a wealthy family. Ibig sabihin, kunyari, nag-asawa ka ng Ayala de Zubel, ganun. When you marry a rich person, you marry money, okay? For example, he thought she loved him, but she left him, for, she left him to marry money. Ibig sabihin, yung babae dito sa kwento na to, Iniwan niya yung lalaki to marry someone na mayaman. Okay? So, when you're marrying money, you're marrying a rich person. It's rather obvious naman, so we're not going to dwell too much on this. For my money. Ito yung for my money, this is actually uh, something na lagi natin na i-encounter. Pero na, hindi natin na papansin masyado yung, yung ibig sabihin niya. For my money means to express someone's opinion. So, you say something, tapos you say, for my money, ibig sabihin yun yung sa tingin ko. Parang ganun, yun yung pinaka-equivalent niya. So, saying something according to what one believes. For example, I think this is the best laptop there is for my money. So, when you say for my money, ibig sabihin, hindi naman necessarily na siya yung bibili, no? Pag for my money, ibig sabihin, yun yung opinion niya on that laptop. Okay? Kaya, so, kung may nagtatanong, or meron kang na need. Have money to burn, okay? When you're burning money, or have money to burn, may pera ka para sunugin. Ibig sabihin, nagsusunog ka ng pera, you have sobrang money. You have an excessive amount of money to spend. So, when you're burning money, ibig sabihin, alam niyo yun yung gastos dito, gastos doon. Yun yung pinakaibig sabihin niya. 
So for example, I have time, good company, and money to burn. This vacation is going to be fun. Kasi meron daw siyang oras, meron siyang good company, marami siyang mga kasama na gusto niya, and meron siyang pera para sumugin or para gastusin. Money for jam. Now, ang jam, you have, but sa Pilipinas, masikat yung coco jam, no? At saka strawberry jam, if you're from Baguio. So, money for jam basically means earning money ng madali. Have an easy and quick way to earn money. Ibig sabihin, jam lang, okay? Uh, kikita ka na ng pera. Yung parang ganun yung feeling niya. Kasi if you think about what jam is, di ba? Ang jam, hindi naman siya necessarily something na sobrang hirap gawin. Di ba? So, lalagay mo lang siya sa... Uh, lalagyanan yung fruits, lalagyan mo ng asukal, ikot, halu-haluin mo, lalagyan mo sa garapon, tas it, pera, magiging pera na siya, basically. Yun yung ibig sabihin, money for jam. So, for example, uh, you get paid for living in a vacation house, that's money for jam. Ibig sabihin, itong tao na itong kausap, nakatira daw siya sa vacation house, yun, yun yung binabayaran siya, basically, katiwala siya sa vacation house. So, money for jam, ibig sabihin, madali lang na pera yun. Diba? Nakatira ka lang sa vacation house, binabayaran ka pa. Yun yung sinasabi niya dito sa sentence na to. My two cents. So, actually, I have, uh, I had, kasi hindi ko naman siya alam yung namintin ngayon, may ano akong blog na my two cents on. Ang my two cents kasi means you're offering someone's, you're offering someone yung opinion ninyo. To, so, to share someone's opinion on a matter, ang tagline nga ng website ko na yun, so it's in, in WordPress, kung interested kayo. So, www. Uh, my two cents dot wordpress dot com. Tinatay nyan tama ba yun? It's it's a page where I share my opinion on different things. Yung mga ganyan, ganyan. So when you share your opinion, you're offering your two cents. Okay. Usually said that the opinion is unsolicited. Ashing tagline nung page kasi unsolicited advice from a novice. So unsolicited, ibig sabihin hindi sinolicit, ibig sabihin hindi hiningi. So pag nagbibigay kayo ng opinion na hindi naman hinihingi, yun yung two, two cents nyo yun. Ibig sabihin wala siya masyadong value. Uh, Para in, in, in downplay mo yung value ng opinion mo. So for example, you should think before you act. That's just my two cents. Ibig sabihin itong sinasabihan, sabi niya doon sa kaibigan niya kunyari, oh mag-isip ka muna bago ka gumalaw, opinion ko lang yun ha. That's what I think. Okay, that's just my two cents. Yung ibig sabihin. Next, a penny for your thoughts. So, ang penny is basically a uh, very small value, no? So, ang penny for your thoughts, you hear this sometimes in uh, movies, you see this in uh, books. It's asking for what another is thinking about. So, kunyari, for example, meron kang nakikita kaibigan mo, tulala siya. You say a penny for your thoughts or a penny for your thoughts. For example, I watched him staring at the sea. After three long minutes, I asked Penny for your thoughts. Ibig sabihin, itong, kaus- itong lalaki na ito, nakatitig lang daw sa dagat. So, dahil ito lalaki, tinanong siya, Penny for your thoughts. Okay? Yan siya. A dime's worth. Ang dime, okay, is five uh, cents. It's a little higher than a penny. Pero ang, ang a dime's worth is hardly any difference. Ibig sabihin, halos walang pagkakaiba. Okay? Or an insignificant amount. Kasi maliit lang yung value ng dime. Okay? So, for example, you can try to talk for hours, but it won't make a dime's worth to change his mind. Ang ibig sabihin, kahit daw magsalita ka ng lang oras, uh, wala nang magbabago sa isip niya. It won't make a dime's worth. Ibig sabihin, hindi siya magkakaroon ng impact or magkakaroon ng change. Hindi siya makaka-apekto ng malaki to change his mind. Dime a dozen. So, again, dime, five cents, maliit ang value. Okay? A dozen. Ibig sabihin, isang dosena, four 5 cents. Maliit ang value. So, pwede natin hulaan yon using yung ating knowledge of what a dime is. So, uh, a dime a dozen is something that is so common, it loses its value. Ibig sabihin, uh, di ba dito sa mundo, if you think about yung mga bagay na mataas ang value like gold, mga diamond, ganyan-ganyan, the reason kung bakit siya mataas ang value is because they are rare. So, when something is a dime a dozen, ibig sabihin, Diba? Nagkalat siya dyan, okay? Parang masyado, bumababa yung value niya, okay? Kaya, ang lupa, okay, yung soil, is not as expensive as gold kasi yung soil, kahit saan ka tumingin, or sand, nandyan naman yan. Pero ang diamond, hindi siya lagi nandyan. So, it loses its value pag marami siya. For example, sentence natin, In the Philippines, belters are a dime a dozen. Kasi a dime a dozen ang belters kasi, di ba, sa Pilipinas, ang daming magaling kumanta, mga bumibirit, queen, di ba, ganyan. Marami, a dime a dozen. Ibig sabihin, 
nagkalat sila dyan, naglipa na sila. So, mababa, medyo mababa na yung value. Kasi, ano na lang eh, diva doesn't, common naman siya. Pero sa ibang bansa, okay, uh, nagsasucceed yung mga Filipino artists kasi rare tayo sa kanila. Pero dito, maraming ganun, maraming magagaling kumanta. Yun yung value, yun yung ibig sabihin nung sentence. Drop a dime. So, when you drop a dime on someone, you are basically betraying someone by informing on them. Or basically, nagsusumbong ka. Okay? If you drop a dime on someone, ibig sabihin, uh, may ginawa siyang mali, kunyari, tapos nag, ano ka, sumbong, nagsumbong ka. Parang ganun. You're dropping a dime. Ang uh, kwento niyan is because yung dime, yung five cents, yung, yung nagamit when you make a phone call. Yung ba yung, alam niyo, alam ko, naabutan niyo pa yung mga ganun, no? Yung payphone. Yan. So, when you're dropping a dime, ibig sabihin, tumatawag ka. Nagsusumbong ka. You're dropping a dime on someone. Yeah. So, sabi nung sentence natin, she's such a, such a loyal friend, she would never drop a dime on anyone. Ibig sabihin, itong tao na ito pinag-uusapan, hindi siya magbe-betray. Hindi ka niya chichismisin, parang gano'n. Hindi niya, hindi ka niya tatay the rim. Yan, ibig sabihin ng uh, sentence na yan. Okay? When you drop a dime on someone, nagbe-betray ka, basically, susumbong ka kung ano yung sinabi niya, pinagkakalat mo. Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. Bet dollars to donuts. So, dollars to donuts is to emphasize how sure someone is of something. Ibig sabihin, when you are betting dollars to donuts, ano, uh, parang sure na sure ka na kung ano yung sinasabi mo mangyayari. Okay? For example, Beth studied so hard. I bet dollars to donuts she will make it. Ibig sabihin, ako, dahil si Beth nag-aral siya ng mabuti, nakita ko na sobrang... Uh, sobrang dedicated siya sa pag-aaral, I bet dollars to donuts now that she will make it. Ibig sabihin, siguradong sigurado ako 100% napapasa siya. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng bet dollars to donuts. Okay? Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Lalo na ako mag-exam din sila para matulungan natin sila. Welcome to the rowing family ng Team Laika. If you want to... Uh, see me teach or be taught by me directly there are a lot of review events coming up you can go to the www.facebook.com slash team like to see the schedule and your locations no mga yon. also if you want a copy of the review materials you can also find out how to get one of those on sa facebook page all right so make sure to subscribe if you're watching this on youtube hit the bell icon para ma notify kayo as an as a new video posts there are more coming up uh, regarding english math language analytical reasoning and stuff. So, make sure na alam ninyo para makalaman ninyo pag, na, pag ready na yung next video. Okay? So, thank you guys. God bless exam niyo. Adya-adya kayo niyan. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.